Appreciate it, guys. Show, us, you the later. Pool, you next show week. us the pool next week. Yeah, we, yeah do it from the pool. <laughs> That'd be a good idea. A I think we should do Dogs on the Run from Florida with Tim at hey. his place. Oh, uh, that's not a bad idea. Okay. What do you think, Andy? Uh, we'll bring the Swan <laughs> <laughs> and the Magnum. <laughs> the the Magnum. Bring, bring the Magnum. Please. He's not playing, but he still has an influence on the show. All right, God, Tim. We'll talk to you later, Kenny. One more time. Plug your show today. Yeah, today, 1480 AM, WHBC in Canton, WHBC.com. Go to the TuneIn Radio app. You can download it for free. And I start at 3. We go to 6 today because of Buckeye Roundtable. But I'll be on Monday through Friday, 3 to 7 on WHBC. Today, David Griffin, Cavs GM. Paul Warfield, Hall of Fame wide receiver for the Browns, who also played for the Buckeyes and knows all about Stark County football, playing against them. And the funniest man in America, Frank Caliendo, today. So should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to uh, getting in touch, back in touch with all the, the fans out there. What a great week to do it. Kenny, thank you. And again, he was joining us from the KennyRoda.com studio. Kenny, so when you. in doubt this week, just bring up Maslin McKinley and you're good, brother. <laughs> I, yeah, I've been studying up on that rivalry. 125th oh, meeting, Andre, this amazing. week between uh, McKinley and Maslin. So uh, I'm going to be at my first one ever. Looking forward to it. So thanks, guys. All right, stuff, thank you, man. Kenny. Good luck today. Good luck. All right, I'm going to go right to the hotline. Let's go to uh, Chris Fedor uh, from S Cleveland.com. Start off, Fedor, with the question that, because Eric threw us off with it. That's a good one. But Who's Fedor the MVP, Fedor? Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. You have to pick one. Come on, Chris. You have to pick one. I got to pick one. Yes. yes. One guy. Who's the MVP? See, the hardest thing about this is that it's a different guy every single game. But the, oh. I, no, 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 but I, I love Chris. You got to pick a guy, and I know you don't want to. You're like the I'm Snickers commercial to, right Chris. now. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that. I'll I, say uh, Joe Thomas. He's uh, the best player for the he don't even practice during the week, Chris. Finish. He doesn't need to. He's that good. <laughs> I love I knew Chris would wiggle out of this. He ain't saying that name for nothing. <laughs> nope. That's not happening, Dre. You can keep trying, buddy. Uh, All right, Chris. <laughs> uh, apparently, some people in this town think that uh, the Browns have won multiple Super Bowls since 99, and they can't appreciate a win. I know it was ugly yesterday, but when I woke up yeah. this morning, I saw the Browns are over 500. What's your take on yesterday's game? Well, I mean, I felt better when I woke up this morning than when I was watching it, guys, because yeah. as I was watching the game, I was just as frustrated as I was when I was watching them play Jacksonville and watching them play the Tennessee Titans because I think it's okay to expect more from this team. I think it's okay to expect them to actually go a half and score a touchdown against one of the worst teams in the NFL. They played back-to-back -back weeks against Jacksonville and Oakland, and they went seven quarters without scoring a touchdown. That's atrocious to me. It is. That's unacceptable to me. It really is. But at the same time, you're right, guys. They did win the game. They are 4-3. and three. They're above 500. they They've got a chance to beat Tampa Bay and go to 5-3. and three. As the game was unfolding, I was getting really, really frustrated. But when I woke up this morning, I did recognize that the Browns did win the game. They have a lot of work to do. They've got to play a whole lot better against Tampa Bay to beat the Buccaneers. But it was what it was a win, and we don't get too many of those. In no, the Chris, I put it this way, and I and I think you understand. You ever had that bad car, and the engine light comes on, but you know it's okay because it's your you know it's yep. your car. That's the Browns' offense right now, Chris. I've got mid, I got small guys at wide receiver. I had to, I had to edit myself. <laughs> you got it all. I got a center. There, there. are no rules. Yeah, I know. It's not, yeah, yeah, but it's one trouble. of those words. I don't want people t know, tweeting yeah. and everything else. But you get what I'm saying, Chris. I'm yeah. not saying Brian Hoyer is going to the Hall of Fame. I'm not. But he's getting into a, you know, a two, he's getting into a 1985 car right now that doesn't have all the pistons sparking at, at the right pace. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. Um, when it comes down to that, the running game was non-existent. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, once again, it's been a problem for the last two weeks. They're going to have to get that back going again because I think there are some truths about Brian Hoyer that some people will admit and other people won't admit. And one of the biggest truths about Brian Hoyer is. In order for him to be a successful quarterback, he needs a running game. Yes. Because he needs play action to open up some shots downfield. He needs play action to open up some uh, passing lanes because he's not the most accurate well, guy, and he well, doesn't have the greatest arm. Chris, but it's two ways. You're right about that part, but you need a receiver that can get open on his own as well. The, the, the play action, they need the play action for what you just said, but because these guys can't beat one-on-one -on -one coverage either. Yeah, it's true. I think the biggest play that the Browns had in terms of the passing game, it was off of play action. It was Andrew Hawkins getting wide open on a double move. And yeah. we've seen that at times. We've seen tight ends running free coming off of play action because the defense 
has been so worried about the running game in the past. You're right. That's what this offense needs in order to function. So I think the number one goal for the Browns going into the game against Tampa Bay, and look, Tampa Bay is not a great team. They just lost to Minnesota yesterday. Um, But the number one thing they have to focus on is getting that running game back to a level where the opponent is going to be concerned about it so that the offense can start humming along the way that it did at the beginning of the season, especially the way it did against the Pittsburgh Steelers when there were so many reasons for optimism and so many reasons for excitement about this team. I want to be excited about this team overall again, and it's hard to me to get excited when they play um, as poorly as they did against Jacksonville and as poorly as they did yesterday for three quarters against the worst team in the NFL, the Raiders. It's November and they're going to be over 500, Chris. I hear you, buddy, but th- th- we haven't said that a lot in the past. <laughs> that's exactly right, and that's why when I woke up this morning, I was feeling <laughs> a little bit better. All right, hey, Chris, thank you very much. Uh, we'll make sure we check out uh, busy, uh, Cleveland.com. Thank busy you so week much. for you with the Cavs. Good luck, buddy. It'll be fun, won't it? You know it, guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. Chris, thank it. you, and we appreciate you hanging on as long as you did, too. Um, I, you want to Just real quick, let's do caption. Let's do the caption. Okay. I just want to make sure. All right, what's your uh, – you got a caption on this? Uh, Dante Whitner coming home, bringing home the bacon. That's uh, what he was brought here to do. Uh, I'll say ball going in the right direction, team in the right direction, because that's the, what turned the whole game yesterday. Yeah. It's a great picture. It's a wonderful picture. Kind of says, uh, says it all. All right, I'm glad we did that. All right, <laughs> glad we got that in. Let's go uh, now out to Baltimore, and we're going to check in with Garrett Downing from Ravens. Pass interference on Garrett. That was terrible, Garrett. Terrible. <laughs> I didn't let him play, right? Yeah. Uh, all right, first of all, I, I, I think the thing that – uh, I don't know. The, the thing that was most surprising to me was I thought the Ravens defense was playing well. Chance to win the game. The, it's on the Ravens defense. Yeah. Forget about the pass interference call. Because, you know, I'm listening to the game on the radio. By the way, Jerry Sandusky's the really best. good. He's one of the best. He is so good, He's and great. I got to listen to the end of that game on the radio. Um, but to, to, to listen to him and to hear what was going on, I'm like, all the Ravens defense needs to do is step out there, and they're going to win this game. What happened? Yeah. They just couldn't get him off the field, really. I mean, Mohamed Sanu, Jimmy Smith, the Ravens' top cornerback, went down earlier in the game. And then the Bengals really went after guy Dominique Franks, who the Ravens signed you know, off the street a couple weeks ago, and he ended up playing pretty much the entire game yesterday. And he was matched up against Mohamed Sanu, and they kept going to Sanu. And then, he, and then Sanu hit a big play on that, on that final drive, put him in good position. And then the Bengals, once they got in the red zone yesterday, they were, they were scoring every time they got in there. Um, and so that's what happened yesterday. They just couldn't get them off the field, and then they just ate up clock, uh, ended up scoring on a quarterback sneak. I mean, this defense played well, but when you get them on the, when you have a final drive like that, you can't let it, let them, you just can't let them score a touchdown. You can't let them score a touchdown, and they they allowed the one thing to happen that couldn't happen. Yeah, and for Coach Harbaugh, I know that he, you know, he's going to try to push this game away, but did he mention yesterday, Garrett, that that one interference call could be the difference in winning the AFC North or not? You know, he, he was asked about it, and uh, I think his non-answer was the answer. He said, I'm not allowed to answer that question yeah. <laughs> uh, when he was asked about, you know, that, that pass interference call. It's the sentiment in the locker room after the game was pretty much everybody saying, hey, look, it happened. Uh, kind of c- could have gone either way. Gutsy call by the official. The trail yeah. slogan's like, hey, man, that's a ballsy call, um, which, of course, it is. You don't see offensive pass interference call that often. You definitely don't see it very often at the end of the game on deciding plays like that to wipe off an 80-yard touchdown. Um, <laughs> But, hey, I mean, it's a call that could have gone either way. Uh, I thought it was a little soft, but, what you know, that's just kind of the way it goes. So, um, he, it, was a, it was a short press conference, short series of press <laughs> conference know. after the game, series of press conferences after the game. Ray's Ra- Ra- got to get right back to work. They faced the, the Steelers here. Uh, the Steelers are pretty good yesterday, six touchdowns from Ben. So, yeah. uh, they've got to face them on prime time in a week. So, they've got to get right back to work Can't today. All right, Garrett, one last question for you. Uh, up on the wall in your office there in uh, in Baltimore, play like a Raven. What does that mean? Uh, it wasn't yesterday. That's kind of the that's the phrase around here. That's the the mantra. That's funny because I've motto. heard it somewhere else. Three other teams. Um, yeah, I think a few teams probably yeah. have it, but that's kind of like the slogan around here. Um, but it. hey, it wasn't yesterday. Like dogs that here. was that was not the case yesterday. D- just to define it for me, because I wrote down some words that I thought you might use. <laughs> well, what are your words? I, I bet you're. No, words you go. You go first. Mind. Uh, Don't get arrested. Oh, 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 I didn't say that. I'm joking. That was a joke here. <laughs> Stop. What are, what are your words, Andy? Uh, <laughs> just give me two adjectives for I said, play, I, no, I, and they're all I clean. I just think I, I'm just looking at it going. If someone said to me if I was in Baltimore and I was Harbaugh and I said play like a Raven, 
What does that mean? Just give me two adjectives. I just want to see if you use anything that I have written down. The first one, and then I I think attitude is another one. All right, I had hard nosed, tough, down and dirty AFC North grind it out. Yep. Yeah. Hey, hey, the AFC North is the best division in football. It's the only division where every team's over 500. This thing is wide open. I mean, it is wide, wide open. And yesterday, the Ravens-Bengals game looked like an AFC North game. The Ravens had about five guys get injured during the game. After playing in back-to-back games against the NFC South, it was like, welcome back to life in the AFC North, man. It's bruising, rough and tough football. Yeah, I think if you win yesterday, you you have control for the rest of the year. Yeah, I agree. That's a tough loss yesterday. But they didn't. All right, Garrett, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Still Uh, the premier, before we go, still the premier matchup in the NFL. It's the Steelers-Ravens. It really is. You know what I mean? I mean yeah. the rant, you know, the NFC West has come along, and I know San Francisco, Seattle, everybody wants to talk about. But I think we found out yesterday, and we'll find out next week, the premier matchup in the NFL, Steelers, Ravens still. So the Jaguars, Panthers isn't it anymore. <laughs> no, I don't think no, so. All right, we're in overtime. I heard you. Let's go to Roger Shenwa, who's sticking by, former offensive lineman for the Browns. Hey, what, I, I just really want to know what you think of the offensive line. Well, I, I think with the offensive line, just like anything, when you lose a key player, you know, in one one game, and then it takes a couple of games for them to kind of get back into a groove. Uh, I think that the running game is uh, still looking for its identity. Uh, you know, I'd love to see how things are going to look in another week or so, but uh, the good thing is they won the game, you know, and, that, and that's really what it comes down to at this point. No, Rod, you're absolutely right. When you look at the offensive line and you look at the success they had the first couple of weeks with this zone blocking, what do you see as the issue that are your teams ganging up on the offensive line? And the big thing about zone blocking for the run game is usually on the backside, you know, you can, you can cut your guy and give a cutback lane, and that doesn't seem to be there either. Well, again, I think it goes back to uh, having a cohesiveness of, of five guys playing together on a consistent basis. And I think that as time goes on, you'll see that get get better and get back into a groove. Um, you know, zone blocking, just like a, just like anything, it's about the team and, and being able to make sure that they can uh, be on the same page at the same time for every play. Uh, Roger, what's going on in your office there? I see people are dropping <laughs> papers off. They're they're causing all kinds of problems for you. Well, you know, it's the end of the month, and I'm in sales, so things are kind of humming around here. So that, that's really what it is you hear in the background. All right, you're working hard, and we appreciate you checking in with us, and, and we really appreciate the conversation too, Roger. Not a problem. I appreciate the opportunity, fellas. All right, we'll catch up with you next week. Take we care, a little bit more time. All right, Eric, the referee, what else do we have to get in here? Can I put somebody in the doghouse? One more. We got one more caption. Oh, man. Uh, okay, give me one more quick. caption. I'd waste uh, the time, but keep I, going. I think this is an interesting pull. I'm interested to see what you guys come up with this. Uh, you know what? He's saying to Johnny, you keep that hat on or your back of your jersey is going to look like mine. That's a sign that when your quarterback's not having a good day, when, the bat, when his letters on his name are green. Nobody else noticed that, I bet. Oh, that Hoyer is on his that back. That means ever. you're getting hit on your back. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I hope you're listening. I hope that's what he's getting out of yeah. this. That's a, Manziel, I hope you're listening because your time is going to come eventually. You're going to get an opportunity. Yeah. I hope you're listening, and I hope you're learning. And that's what I think uh, that caption says to me. You good with that? All yeah. right, let's uh, – Real quick, uh, in the doghouse. Well, of course. Get, get the doghouse. Travis Benjamin, when it comes to putt returning, the first key is to catch the ball, hold the football, and run forward. What is going on with special teams on this team? It's unspecial how they won yesterday because of that. They got to fix it. Josh Cribbs is ready. Call him. This is getting ridiculous. I'm sorry. I probably won't be able to talk. This was my point last night while you were in Chicago. Yes. That this city was so spoiled with Josh Cribbs that you now can appreciate Josh more than ever. Good point. Because there's nothing going on there. But come on. I mean, we can't get one guy that can just catch the punt, go forward, Fair catch. Thank you. Fair catch. That's it. How? Why is this so t- difficult for this team? It's uh, difficult. We hold our. We get. A, we get a team in the fourth down, and we go. Oh no! <laughs> is Jim Leonard back there? <laughs> like that's where we're at right now. Well, here's who's in the doghouse for me. Anyone that's going to sit around and complain about the fact that the Browns won yesterday. Okay. That's my. It, the bottom line is that since 1999, this team has struggled to get victories. So cherish everyone. It doesn't have to be beautiful, folks. You just have to survive. And the other thing is, everyone expected this team to go 3-0 over this three-week period. Next week, if the momentum continues to build, they should be right back on track for Cincinnati. The games against teams that are winless 
look exactly like those kind of games. You play with your competition, and no one ever wants to give the other team credit. Do you think Oakland wants to fly all the way across the country to lose? They are a professional football team. If you think they're going to lay down and die, they're not going to. So in the doghouse, are those fans bitching about the fact that the Browns didn't win pretty? What else you got? Final thoughts. That's it. That's and it. let's do final thoughts. Final thoughts. Despite the loss last week, this victory puts this team right on the pace to be where we thought they could be on that Thursday night game. Isn't that what this season is going to come down to? They, they can beat Tampa Bay. We go to that Thursday night game into the biggest weekend, really, in, North, in, in Ohio sports-wise. Same weekend, we get the Buckeyes and the Spartans. Oh, yeah. And we get big playoff high school football around here. Uh, let's, let's, let's get that momentum going. And there's some basketball team starting up, too. Yeah, this is going to be a great week. It, it really is. is. And, as, you know, you, you sit here and you watch the Raiders, and you're like, okay, they're the Raiders. They haven't won a game. It's still a win. And this town is about to turn on its heels on Thursday night when the entire world, as we found yeah. out from Australia today, is going to be watching the city of Cleveland on Thursday night. And you know what else I like is the fact that we don't have to talk about LeBron wearing a Cowboys hat oh my God, at yesterday's I game. I, don't know. I had somebody tweet me, they go, he's only there because the Cowboys play Monday night. When we relax and just enjoy something and stop complaining <laughs> and bitching so much, enjoy life. Like, You're seriously. awake, aren't you? Yes, I'm awake. Yes. A lot of people are pushing daisies today. Good point. So, all right, Eric, what, anything else? Any other housekeeping? I have a final thought. I just, oh, okay. Well, Eric, the referee has a final thought. Yes. You want to capture I'm sure it? it's from three hours ago. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> the, the only stat that matters is wins and losses. Aaron Rodgers had 400 yards passing last night. Great but point. did his team win? No. I'll Great take point. Brian Hoyer, who manages the game and gets us wins. He's 7-3. and three. Stop complaining. I don't care if Manziel would throw 500 yards in a game. If he doesn't win, I don't care. I want a team that's going to win. Brian Hoyer, I believe, gives this team the best chance to win right now. All right. Nice job, Good Eric. stuff, Eric. All right. This is probably the most prolific thing you've said in your uh, two years on this show. Good job. Thank you. Hey, got to keep, keep my job. job. Right, just go home say. and get some sleep. Try to keep his job. All right, are we done? We're, we're done. I think we're done. We're done. That's it. All right. We already, and six minutes of overtime. There are no rules. No. Uh, Spastic Dave, wherever you are, we miss you. Yes. We miss you. And I miss my man Tubby. Tubby, after wins, I need you, brother. Yeah, t- I think Tubby tried to get through today. At least we got one of his tweets in. Yeah, it's uh, Pro quarterback it's or Tubby? It's tough. Tough. It's tough. Tubby, I love you. And I know you like those 425 games. Gives you a little bit longer to uh, get ready for them. We're so. done. I think we're going to do double duty for the Cincinnati game, but we'll make that announcement on the web as well. So take care. We'll talk to you later. He'll talk to you later. Yes. I'll talk to you later as well. Make sure you watch Mike Harris tonight on News Channel 5 as well. For Eric the Referee, he's Andre. We are out of here. See you later. Bye.